yeah, it's like I'm turning into my persona, but not in like a good way. It just means that like I have difficulty speaking. Oh, that's like you know that's like <laughs> the, that's the complicated effects of uh, TF. Yeah, like. <gasps> Welcome to the Long Cough <laughs> Hour. A podcast where two friends talk about old cartoon shows and how horny they are. Yes, um, this is a show where we talk about um, the old cartoons and how horny they are. And how, they and how horny we are in reaction to them. Yes, yeah. We're just a couple of gay nerds talking about gay things, and sometimes there's bondage conversation involved. Um, but right now we are going over uh you know, Gargoyles, one of the uh one of our favorite shows mutually. Yes, and we're up to episode four now, uh Awakening Part Four is the name of this episode. But before we get to that we have some business to discuss from last episode, I feel. Yes, we do. Last episode, we were indecisive on what the horniest animator's moment, the, the horniest moment in the animation of the last episode was. Uh, it right, was... you thought it was Goliath passing out in a chokehold after he was tranquilized, and I thought it was a hot, beefy punk stretching a chain between his hands like okay, i'm trying to take um so with a total of 15 votes on our poll after our poll was stretched for an entire week of you know optional voting um it seems that my choice is the winner just by oh, disappointing just like a couple of votes though it was pretty neck and neck for a while you know, for a while mine was in the lead like in the beginning like but the then, beginning. then goliath took over yeah i guess people just can't get enough of passed out goliath all those all those muscles of his just Look, going slack it's just hot helpless okay. yeah he's just a big guy he's a like big guy. i agree it's hot so I guess I guess I must concede this to you. Yes. You are the winner today. I, I am the winner today. Um <laughs> and other than that, that yeah, that is the uh moment for last episode. Now moving on to uh Awakening Part four. Um suppose we can begin breaking down the episode at this point. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll just go ahead. So okay, so last episode ended with goliath definitely unconscious are, are we know. agreed on that yes yes we are <laughs> it's like okay so then this episode opens however and he seems to be wide awake again see it's like that scene <laughs> from um you ever watch misery no there's like this scene where is like it, is that based on the stephen king novel it is Okay, so I've read, like, some of the book ones. Does that, I don't know. Is that enough Th there's, for this? I don't think it is. There's, like, this one scene in the movie where, like, um, Annie Wilkes is just pissed off because she's recounting this time she went to, like, a screenplay with, like, this, this hero named Rocket Man being trapped in the back of a car, and, like, the car explodes, and then she goes to the next showing, and it shows him get out of the car before it explodes, and she got Right, so he rolls out. She got so pissed off at that that she apparently... Because it's fucking bullshit! They're just, they're going yeah. back and changing stuff. Like, they think we won't notice this. We do. Yeah. We notice this. <laughs> yeah, so, like, the whole scene... We know what happened at the end of the last episode. The whole scene is just Ugh. her freaking out about that, and I feel like that no, resonates. I'm, I'm with her on this one. She 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 says, and I quote, "He didn't get out of the cockadoodie car." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that well, line. Well, I, Goliath here definitely passed out, but he seems to be awake now. He has a he has a gun points at him. And the guy yeah, is all like, uh, yeah, "Episode okay." So the episode immediately starts <laughs> out on a bunch of the squad guys holding Goliath's boobles in order to subdue him. Oh my god! The yeah, they're guy, all just like grasping him. They're jerking him off, and the one guy they with probably the gun, are. They probably are. The one it's guy the only way to like keep him subdued is just continually milk him. Honestly, right? I mean, how <laughs> if you're gonna keep someone subdued, that's the way to do it. I'm trying to outdo last episode for just us being flagrantly horny. I think it's going well so far. Yeah, no, it's fine. We're just the, the podcast just gets hornier from this point forward. God, we haven't even uh, we haven't even been introduced to the pack yet. Um. Oh my god. So, soon. 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 Like We're soon. almost there. We're almost there. And the one guy with the gun is just like, once you're out of the way, we'll hunt down those others. And Goliath... Uh-huh. And Goliath's like, no, I won't let you. 
you and know. then he just kind of like very ineffectually like squirms yeah underneath I, I, these four I people. I also wrote down the word squirming on the ground. <laughs> And like his tail is sort of like lashing back and forth. You can see like you can see almost his entire ass, by the way, as yeah, this is happening. You were very, too. See, like you sent me that and I had to like look really closely because it's like I've seen so many screenshots of like his ass at this point. I'm like, is it there? I feel like it is. And he's just like, oh, let me go. Oh, I, like it's just this big muscular beefy man. Just being helpless, and that's hot to me. Like that is my thing. Is there so, any like horny fan art of like just Goliath being subdued by these guys? Yeah. If not, then what the hell is wrong? I don't with people. None that I've seen, but there's a lot of Gargoyles fan art out there, and I haven't seen most of it. So maybe there is. Maybe people should send that to us if it is a thing. Yeah. No. Send us porn. Um. So you know, Goliath <laughs> is just like, no, I won't let you. You know, trying to maintain his protective dad role, and he's also still quite clearly traumatized over the whole losing his entire clan and species thing. He's very protective, and mm -hmm. the guy with the gun is all, "What makes you think you got a choice?" So it's like, there's definitely no safe words involved with this, you know, little game thing going on here. No. Yeah. This is this is beyond the standard chink play already, and plus no. they're in a public space. Like people yeah. around them aren't consenting to be witnessing this, Dude, uh, including okay. Elisa, who's no, still being held. And <laughs> no, no, okay, but like the whole like there's this whole sequence that goes on in this park for like the next like several minutes, and we don't this see a single we don't see a single person in this park until like later on yeah i mean like it is a park but it's still like a central park like there's gonna be people walking around or at least an earshot of all this but yeah, i guess we don't see they any. hear what's going on and they decide not to interfere because they're like i don't know what's happening over there it sounds like weirdly sexual i don't want to yeah, get involved yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, New Yorkers know to stay out of each other's way. When Ali like that. Alisa, who's being manhandled off to the side, you know, like a woman handled. Right. <laughs> um, like a like a bamf just fucking steps on the SWAT guy's foot and you hear a solid crunch when she does it. You know, it's like she pulled a Daphne. Yeah, she's getting she, fucking serious. She, she pulled a Daphne there, you know, she does that thing. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Daphne did that thing where she like crushes like the guy's foot and like they, they mm -hmm. just fucking grovel because it hurts so bad. Yeah, when she was played by Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was like in the that was in the animated movies. Oh, was it? I was thinking the live action movie. I mean, I was thinking like the there's a scene in like near the end of like the Loch Ness monster movie where her and her cousin both do it to two different guys at the same time. There's like seven thousand Scooby Doo movies by this point. I've seen most of them. Um, there's so much lore. There's a lot of lore. Uh, so she's free, and then she kicks this guy's ass, and then throws him to the side like he's trash. And then yeah, well, okay, so she rams her elbow into his gut. I just want to describe what she does. And then she does what I call the Star Trek maneuver, which is when you put your hand inside your other hand, like you put your hands together, and then you do like this two-handed blow to like wow. the back of his of his head. I've only seen it in Star Trek. Well, and now there's gargoyles. No, there's no coincidence <laughs> because most of the voice actors and gargoyles are Star Trek. I know, that's what made yeah. me think of it. I was like, it's like the same show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it just made me happy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she fucking wrecks this guy. And, and then Goliath like, just sort of recovers and like wrecks all of his guys, too. I don't know how he does this. Okay, yeah, no. She goes after, like, um... She goes after the one guy with the gun and kicks him into the next world. And Goliath, despite being tranquilized and choked out, starts kicking these fuckers away. And they get, like, thrown into bushes, of all things. Like, they just kind of, yeah. like, 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 they're gone after that. And, like, so, um... Once Except they're... for one of them, the sassy blonde one. Yeah, no, no. And they're Elisa and Goliath are both free. And she runs up and she touches, like, Goliath's bicep first thing, I notice. <laughs> I, I don't know why she does that. I Listen, guess. she Pri knows what she wants. <laughs> Priorities, okay. yeah. And, I mean, um, like, just like Xanatos does, if you want to seduce Goliath, you just have to touch him a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. like, get him get him used to, like, God, your hands all over. Both him. Xanatos and Elisa are just, like, immediately all over Goliath. They're just, like, they, they know him more intimately than most know him. Now. I mean, look at him. You, you want to touch all that. I do. I, I, I've, I've, I've dreamt about it. 
So um, mm. she, she she's touching the bicep, and then they're like, "Holy shit, we're being shot at!" Because the sassy blonde girl with the gun is like shooting at them, and a somewhat weakened Goliath scoops Elisa up into his arms and just begins to dashing through the park while the girl of the mm-hmm. squad is just after him with her gun or whatever. Um, he jumps off like a little rock quarry and manages to glide for a bit in the air, and the girls yes. missing every shot, just every shot. Yeah, like, this girl, she's really hardcore, but I, she doesn't have the best aim throughout no, the entire episode. No, she doesn't, she um, doesn't. Like, she's definitely the best out of all of them, but, like, even she could use some work, you know, at the shooting range. Yeah. So, um, the guy commands the girl to cease firing, because, you know, he's saying they won't get far, and it's here you get the inclination that they're being tracked. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, they won't get far, because I already know, like, where they're going and stuff allegedly so we get this really cool um we get this really cool cutaway that i'd notice or it looks like i love this yes! cutaway. like the screen is being ripped by gargoyle claws and stuff yes it just and, and then like the next scene like appears where the rips the, were and like it's so cool yeah but the first thing we see as the next scene appears is broadway fucking eating again i know <laughs> It's all he does in this entire beginning five part. Oh, but yeah, it's God. Broadway and Brooklyn flying, and Broadway just stuffing his face. It looks like with just bread. I don't even. Um, I, I didn't take notes. It looked like. Well, what the, well, it looks like bread to me. Like he's doing what I do at home. At like, least, I, ha- at, I have a habit of often at, just. I just sit at home eating bread myself sometimes. I like bread a lot, so I, like I identify with Broadway right now. I I um. At least it's not cave slime. <laughs> no, it's not. Sorry, um, but he's talk. acting like it's the best fucking bread he's like ever had. He's like, these are so good. In Brooklyn, like, I've never tasted anything like it. Brooklyn, but like, they had bread in medieval Scotland, so I don't know why this bread is so impressive to him. Because it's New York. Maybe it's, maybe it's sourdough. Maybe he's never had sourdough. Bread Literally, before. New York has like <laughs> some really good like food and like pieces. Okay, so it's like um Brooklyn gives him the dirtiest look as he's eating, and Broadway's just like these are great. You should try some. And Brooklyn's like we wouldn't, we would have if you hadn't eaten the entire cartful. And I'm just thinking, uh-huh. what happened before this? How did they get? Thank that you. Food? Yeah, like what part are they talking <laughs> about? What? Where did they get this food? Like, did they I... rob somebody who was like? I don't know where what <laughs> cart they're even talking about. Oh my about. god, day one into um, the big I like city. that they're just having adventures off camera, and we yeah. don't even know what they're doing anymore. So, day one into the big city, they've already committed, like, theft and Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, and, and they, just... they destroyed that fucking motorcycle. Ah. Uh... They've they've committed so many crimes. I love them. They're, they're just a cha- um, they're chaotic baby bunch, so... So... <laughs> The two of them land on a building, and like I think around this point, I was like, "Where is Lexington?" Like yeah. we never see just two of them without the third one around. But then my question got answered: Does Lexington just like sort of falls out of the sky, like behind them, and crashes into a wall? And uh, instead of landing gracefully like they did, I guess they're trying to just show he's clumsy. I don't, I don't know, know why. I don't even know. He's he got the he's got the shortest wings out of the bunch. Is why. Um... And it's harder for him. Yeah, well, he says, like, this is a big city. Like, my wings are tired. Like, it was really cute. Yeah, okay. I don't know. He doesn't seem so tired. I also would like to point out as he's falling onto the building, um, there's like some Christmassy chimes in the soundtrack playing. (laughs) And it sounded like, I'm like, okay, I'm straight up just watching Home Alone (laughs) right now. And I didn't notice that. I did notice that when he landed, he was like, his ass was like straight. Up, like he like, was upside he, down, he, like legs like up near where his head was, ass up in the air, upside down. And yeah, like it was the... almost as bad as like Broadway's. Like the time we saw like Broadway's leg up, it's it, like Lexington's loincloth just like barely covers his taint here. Yeah, so, like, he's still a little bit more modest than Broadway. Yeah, is. yeah, yeah. So he's his loincloth is just kind of like gracefully following the laws of gravity here, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, and he, he just kind of rolls over to the side and yeah, he's like, the city's big. So, um, they look over to the ledge of the building and they see a guy on the corner who kind of looks like, uh, who's that director guy? A director? He, no, like the guy who's like shouting, yo, taxi. Like, well, who does he Uh... look like? He's got like glasses and like gray hair. 
Um, I didn't notice that he looked like anybody. Um, he looks Steven like, Spielberg? He looks I don't like, know. I'm just thinking of directors. Yeah, no, he looks like every kind of like director. He kind of looked like Steven Spielberg. He looked like a younger George Lucas. I don't even know. Um, I didn't even notice this guy at all because he just calls for a taxi and gets into one. Listen, and forever, I, 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 I so know, I, I know this man. I've seen him before. If he's not in like a tank top, or if he's not really buff, or he doesn't, it doesn't have like chains he, around oh, his no, neck, no, no, or like that, you know, like that, if there's nothing, if there's nothing hot about him, I'm not gonna remember this person. That is a lie. You remember every background character in this <laughs> show, you bastard. Oh, this one, you're he doesn't like, have a name. He's like, just a random person. You're like, oh yeah, this motorcycle guy. We see him again. That's actually like chatter, whatever you say. I can't wait is. until I tell you about him in this episode and you're gonna be so <laughs> mad at me. No! Because he's in this episode no, that motorcycle not. died. No, he's not. I don't see he him. He is! Oh my god. <laughs> what part of the episode? I'll yeah, I'll I'll tell you when we I get to I need to it. okay, fine. We'll, we'll find out later. <laughs> so this guy, oh god, I need to just you 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 go for a bit. I need to just take him. Maybe. Okay. It's just like a comedic taxi calling scene after this. Just the dark girls decide, well, they just saw a human call a taxi. Maybe they can do that too. Um, I feel like every fucking cartoon in the 90s has a scene like this at some point. Like the monster guy calls for a taxi. The cab driver like freaks out because they're a monster person. They just drive away. And then they say some sort of joke about like, oh, you can never get a taxi in the big city or something stupid like that yeah. but yeah i mean that's what happens i think too. like the original teenage mutant ninja turtles <laughs> did that as well didn't they i i'm almost positive that they did i know there's that one scene where that old lady pulls out a shotgun out of her shopping cart and that uh, whoa you don't remember that pretty hardcore it's been a while since i saw the movie it's I've not, actually it's been the, meaning to watch it's it again not the movie to... it's the uh oh. cartoon i don't remember that at all oh that's it ha- crazy no it happens Wait, which cartoon? Like the '80s cartoon? Yeah, like the the first one. Oh wow! Everybody in New York is holding shotguns at all time. I mean, maybe not a shotgun, but they are prepared for trouble. Make, Make it, it double. double. <laughs> that was that was nice. So yeah, oh. no, Brooklyn calls for a taxi. The taxi fucking floors at the opposite direction, and Broadway's just like, guess we're walking. Yeah. It's just a cute little scene. and But then, right after this, they do that claw transition again. I wish they did this every time. They need, I fucking yeah. love it every time we I see mean, it. I mean, the budget. No, it's so cool. And it, they wouldn't be hard on the budget if they just reuse the... You know, it's fine. No, because it's, it's like they have they to... Do this. It's, it's an animation <laughs> crossfade, because it's like, um... You, you have to take every still, you have to, like, do the same tear away for that still. So mm, yeah. it does cost money to do that. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh. Um, so okay, so we go back to the park. Goliath has remembered that he's tranquilized. Yeah, and he's Goliath like, and Elisa are hiding out under a bridge, and Elisa is just supporting him as he walks. It's like she's already super uh-huh. intimate and comfortable with his body. Like she's been having to touch those yeah. muscles all night. And he's like, into this too. He's yeah. like, Yeah, baby, like hold me up. Like, this is what I'm into. Yeah. Um, and Elisa, she notices that there is well, first she takes out the dart that's like still in and him. And Goliath she's like, is okay, like, Goliath is like, oh, uh, what is wrong with me? And Elisa is pulling uh-huh. out the dart, and she's like, this is what's wrong with you. They pumped you full of something, right? And then she notices that there is also like a tracking beacon on Goliath's back, like just a, like the ones that Spider-Man tra- always leaves on his villains. There's like kind of like uh-huh. a Spider-Man-ish looking uh, symbol on it too. Yeah, there's some sort of logo that she points out. Um, I'm sure it but, won't like, come up later. Whatever. No, it probably not. Um, then Goliath is like he doesn't know how it even got on him, and uh-huh. my theory is that when it was while Xanatos was feeling him up yeah. earlier, yeah, he was just sticking something on him. And in fact, there's probably more tracking devices on him that they don't even know about. Like there's probably just one on his butthole that they haven't no, found. No, there there is. You and, know. <laughs> it was well, 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 it's probably been destroyed though, because like he clenches his cheeks really hard and he just like true. crushes it between them because he's so strong. I have no words. <laughs> I words escape me. Why am I saying the you know? No, this is I a like. I don't this care. I today. don't even question it. We're we're getting into this. No, okay? I'm I'm beyond questioning. So she 
she sees this like homeless dog ooh, sniffing ooh, ooh, around ooh, trash, ooh, 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 and she puts the tracker like on the dog instead, so, so, and like so, shoots it away. So she, he's like, "So how did this transmitter get on me?" And she's like, "Good question." And then just immediately pans to a trash dog sniffing through some trash under the bridge, and it reminds mm-hmm. me of that Drake and Josh episode where oh um God. Drake brings in some dog he found on the streets, and he has it lick Josh's face to wake him up. <laughs> and Josh is just like, what? what is this dog doing here? He's like, oh, it's a trash dog. I found him eating the trash outside. And he's oh like, God. and you let him lick my face? And Drake's just like, yeah. Okay, one, dog's mouths are cleaner than ours. This is established yeah. scientific fact. Two, listeners, if you don't know this already, literally anything that Sid hears about, he will compare to Drake and Josh somehow. <laughs> He's obsessed with this show. I love Drake and Josh. Um, I think it's like, it's just his entire childhood was Drake and Josh. Oh my god, so okay, apparently. okay, 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 we have to like, take a look at what is trending on Twitter right now. One, Wait, what is it? One second, hold on, I gotta... Gonna, is it Drake and Josh? No, it's not Drake and Josh, I wish it was. No, look at this. What I have trending look, is The Villages and Chamber of Commerce. Look at this, our animated dad's getting hotter by the New York Times two hours ago. What the fuck? Right? What? 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 I'm tweeting this okay. right now. How dare they steal my idea for an article? Right? What the fuck is this shit? I don't know. <laughs> the New York fucking Times. You see, that that's validation. Oh yeah, where were we? Um, okay, so um, we're gonna get uh, back to dog, that. Drake and Josh. Yeah, I no, don't Drake and jo- Drake anymore. and Josh. So like, so the dog leaves, and Drake is just like, "Wait, dog, I got garbage," and the dog just leaves, and we never see him again. Oh my god, you went back to destroying the Drake and Josh episode instead of the Gargoyles episode. Oh yeah, oh, no, this is a Gargoyles podcast. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so the trash talk. Uh, okay, so that happens. Um, then there's another transition without the claws this time. You didn't... Wait, transition. what happens? The dog runs away after what, she puts the tractor on. Yes, okay. She's like, go boy, go. And okay. he's like, alright, with the dog bark. That's not that's not what happens. That's not what happened. I don't believe you for a second. He has like the Scooby Doo voice. So um <laughs> we cut back we cut back to the castle and I guess over Hudson has overcome his fear of the television because now he's just kinda lounging back in his chair. Bronx. Yes, he's he's become like peak daddy right now, yeah. just watching TV with and the dog. Bronx, Bronx. You know, he, and he's laughing diddly, like like a very day old man as Aww. he's watching TV. I love Hudson so much. Um, <laughs> and Bronx has his own little sofa off to the side, and it's so cute. And Hudson's just watching late night specials and just laughing his ass his ass off. And he clicks. The okay, chair. so he's. He, he, he's flipping channel. I wrote down every channel yeah. and flipped through. Oh, did you? Okay, I need to hear this. Yeah, okay. So first he's watching, it looks like Looney Tunes, maybe? But there, there's like a cartoon wolf on the screen. Um, <laughs> not the Pax wolf, but like an animal wolf. I'm disappointed. Um, then there's a saxophone playing man, like, making sexy eyes at a lady. That's me. Um, it looks like, yeah. Um, then it looks like there's some, like, a cop show, maybe? I think there's, like, sirens coming from the sound, and, like, there's a, a guy there. Um, then we see the Lion King, yeah. where Rafiki is holding up Simba. Yeah, um, then it looks like a Western. I hope that everyone is very invested in what Hudson was watching on TV this episode. I am! Um, and then there's, well, I think it's, a, like, a dog food commercial. Okay, but it's the um, same dog that we saw under the bridge! Wait, is it? Yes, it is! Model oh my model. god, yeah, you're right, it was. Oh my god. <laughs> I remember I... noticing that and being like, is that the same dog? <laughs> oh my god, it's the same dog. It's like that- So that same... means that after filming this commercial, that poor dog went homeless. He oh probably my didn't god! see any profits from this. Of this poor animal. Dude, this is like- Oh god. That's so sad. Oh, now I feel bad. I hope that dog, you know, gets into a- Finds a good home someday. Like th- th- this cartoon dog. I mean, like, yeah, no, he, he's no, he's like, he's just, he's following where the wind takes him. He, uh, uh he's, yeah, he's just, he's just following the trail of trash. The trash dog, yeah. 
he well he ended up getting a spot on Drake and Josh he years did. later. <laughs> it, so. You know it's funny because I'm pretty sure it's like the same breed of dog. Hold on, I gotta look this up. Oh my god, do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Hold Josh on. Died. No, okay. There's the episode where they have to watch the dog. Oh, I found it. It's the same kind of dog. Oh my god. Yeah, they probably saw this episode of Gargoyles. We're like, we need to make this dog first. We need to make him real, not just cartoon. And then we have to invite him onto our show. He's just licking his face, and Josh is just like Oprah. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um... The dog is ruining so the podcast. So there's a dog food commercial, and then Bronze, like, gets annoyed because he hears, like, a dog barking on TV, and he's like, hey, I'm the dog here. Um, and then Hudson <laughs> is like, oh, settle down, you wee laddie, or whatever the fuck he says. No, he, he doesn't um, say anything, he just kind of laughs. laughs. Uh, he said something in my mind. Um, <laughs> then he notices that the sun is coming up through the window, as the late he does up to the battlements and he sees the uh the trio arrive and he says something to them like it's about time you lads came home like another like oh if you were late then you'd be do a spanking young laddies like just a hot daddy moment yes. um and they start like describing all the city to him because they're so excited and like apparently they've been like everywhere in this fucking city in one night um yes. but he's just like stop like stop hold your horses where's goliath and they just sort of, like, make surprise Pikachu faces at him, and they don't know where Goliath is. And, um, of course, Hudson, you know, who's, like, self-aware in this moment, he's just like, um, we didn't sleep for this long just to lose him now, so hopefully he'll be back. Right. Of course he'll be back, he's the main character, he can't die, nothing bad can happen. Right, of course. Um, so, okay, so we go back to Central Park again, um, Elisa is like still holding Goliath as she's helping him get through Central Park, but then he sees that the sun is coming up, and he realizes that he's going to have no choice but to turn to stone in front of Elisa, um, which she doesn't understand. She's like, "What are you even talking about?" Um, as he's trying to like explain it to her, um, but then she looks over and sees like the '90s like comics hit squad coming for That's her, literally like what in she the distance. They're closing them. in. Yeah, she tells them comic book rejects. Yes! Um, yeah, cause then she looks back at Goliath, and he is, like, already turned to stone. And she's like, what the fuck is yeah, even going yeah, on? Yeah, right she's now? like, god damn it, I finally find a good man in NYC, and he turns to stone? While Goliath is, uh, stoned, Lisa kind of distracts the squad away from him. Wow, she's so brave right now. Yeah, so there's, like, a whole park chase sequence we, we go through. Okay, this- oh my god, this is- this takes a really long time. It does. It's a long chase. Yeah. And then uh, but it just- time. it establishes that she's, like, super badass. No, yeah, she's, like, a b- bamp, a badass motherfucker. Oh, is that what that means? Yeah. Whenever you say Bamp, I think it's Nightcrawler from the X Men. Because he's a badass motherfucker. Well, that that's the sound effect that happens when he teleports. It says Bamp. Because he's a badass motherfucker. Um, she leads this squad to what looks like an outdoor dining area, I guess, or is, it's a bunch of like tables and umbrellas, um, in Central Park, um, which I've actually been to this place by the way because there's a statue that's shown of Alice in Wonderland here uh which is a real statue in central park it's like a uh yeah. i just thought it was like a neat inclusion because they it seems like they do try to put as many like new york city landmarks in the show as possible um so anyway i did a little bit of research on this statue um it was constructed by jose de Cuyft in 1959 um it depicts alice's unbirthday party from the book and it's the only sculpture in central park which is specifically meant to be played on by children. I hope that you learned a little something today. Um, also, in the commentary of this episode that Greg Weissman gives, he says that they specifically chose this statue to show in the episode because it's meant to also show that, like, Elisa has fallen down the rabbit hole herself. Oh my god. Like, into the world of the gargoyles. Oh my god. So there's, there's some symbolism happening here as I well. I guess. Yeah, like, you know, it's not the most clear, but it's just, it's cool. And Alice... No, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, so, they're searching <laughs> for Elisa in this seating area, and 
I do notice that, like, in the, I guess, the daylight or whatever, the soldiers kind of, like, their, their, their butts and their pecs are more, like, distinct. Um, oh, my God. In their, in their, in, in <laughs> uniforms, and... Yeah, you know, well, they, maybe their uniforms, like, shrank as they've been sweating in them. Oh, that's making me what? think. That's making me think. Um... So one guy gets tripped by Elisa, and I guess he's just knocked out instantaneously because he doesn't. Okay, so like, that. yeah, it's, it's, she just knocks him out somehow. All Elisa is doing, by the way, is she's all she's done is just got stuck a under a table. Ass, by the way. And <laughs> he does have a fat ass. Like it's especially, <laughs> but like this like out. elite squad of hitmen like can't find like no one none of them just like look under all the tables like they don't just duck down and like scan the area. They're just walking slowly around this place, like waiting to get ambushed one by one and beat up. What's their What's their story? Like, what? Where did they come from? I don't know. I wish we saw yeah. these people again after this episode, but I'm pretty sure we don't. What? Um, I mean, unless I don't think they come back, do they? I don't know. I, I thought they did. They I thought they did. Well, I guess we're gonna find out as we proceed through the show. But okay, so she gets one somehow. Then she goes off running. They, like they spot her, they shoot at her. Um, but she uses like the guy who she took out. She took his trike gun, I guess, and she shoots back. No, it legit, and gets another I think, one. It legit think like it, it fires like a real gun. And I'm pretty sure she just straight up shoots one of the guys, and we don't. No, see him again. no, you see the trike dart hit him. What? Do, I don't think do she you? kills the guy. Do you? I'm, yeah, I, I think you do see the trike gun, the trunk okay. bullet dart okay. thing. But they're firing machine um, guns at her. Yeah, they're just shooting guns at her by this point. Because I don't... They've just decided to kill her, I guess. Um, I don't even know. And the, the blonde one shoots at her again, but, like, her bullet misses and hits another statue. And I just thought it was funny, because she looks, like, personally affronted that she missed. She just well, looks so she, angry she's about it. she's got the... She doesn't have good aim. Apparently not. Yeah, she... You know, she's just having an off day. It happens. Um... Elisa runs into this boathouse. Yeah. Um, and they just the guy is chasing her, just like shoot up this boathouse while she's in it. Like almost hits her like numerous times, but they barely like they miss barely. Yeah. Um, then she notices that what did get hit is a bunch of gasoline canisters, and then she dives the fuck out of the boathouse right before it explodes. Uh, so there's a very intense action scene happening. A lot happens. Uh, yeah, you know, like, a lot does happen. Um, but they think she's dead. They're like, huh, huh, guess we got her. <laughs> Except for this blonde who is like, she's so fucking hardcore. I don't know what her story is, but she's out for blood. She's like, let's make sure. So, like, they're all like checking around the docks, being like, let's find the body, let's verify the death. But Lisa is like, lurking underneath in the water and like she grabs the blonde and again just somehow disables her like we don't even see how she does it but we just see the blonde has gone down and then Elisa's is running off into the woods this time so there's like one last guy he takes after her he's all like you're making this harder than it has to be and it's like isn't that um, the point it is the point yeah like that is the point you stupid piece of shit yeah. uh, but, so, <laughs> but she pulls the old uh hang her coat from a branch that makes him think it's her trick. Yeah. Uh, which he falls for. And then she just, like, jumps at him. And she just basically beats the shit out of yeah, this guy. Yeah, she, she, and... she judo flips him, and then he's just knocked out, and that's it. She does, just like Xenatos did that other episode. Yeah. We've got some judo practitioners in this we show. We do, we do. I wonder if, like, Elisa and Xenatos will ever judo flip each other at the same time at some point. That'd be interesting. Wow, like to see. maybe if they want to give Goliath a boner, they could do that, like in front of him. You're, I, I have, <laughs> I have thoughts now. <laughs> Goliath just, I being mean, a, Goliath just being a bisexual disaster and watching Xanatos and Elisa fight for his honor. Like pretty much every character in the show is a bisexual disaster. That's why we like yeah, it so much. Yeah, that's that's accurate as hell. Um, so, so she she's victorious. She's out of breath. She picks up her jacket and she's like, "A lot to go through for a piece of lawn sculpture." And then you uh -huh. know, I'm just imagining like the CSI Miami theme playing after that because that's a one liner. Chun chun. It's like I don't know what the theme is. I just don't know. It's like it's like yeah, da 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 da. 
<laughs> I'm serious. Look it up. I, would, I wish that did happen because that would be funny and made me laugh. <laughs> Glad to go through for a piece of lawn sculpture. <laughs> I'll, uh, make it, I'll make an edit later. <laughs> yeah, you should. Uh, so then there's this really sweet scene after this of Elisa just like chilling with Goliath as a statue all day long. Um, a jogger runs by. He's all like, I've run this path for five years. I've never noticed that statue before. And Elisa's all like, yeah, this, this park's just, just full, full of surprises. surprises. <laughs> Winks at camera. <laughs> uh-huh. She does this a lot. I feel like she she breaks the fourth law, the fourth wall, she just, pretty often. She's she's from New York. She's got some one liners. Yeah, she does. She just started to bring that sass. Yeah. Uh, and then she stays with Goliath all day long. Very sweet of her. I I hope she got food at some point, like a no, hot dog or yeah, something. Yeah, I'm I'm very certain she she ate she did that thing. She must have. She ate the hot dog weird. Oh my god. We're not gonna We talk. haven't gotten to that episode we yet. Got to that episode yet. So um <laughs> she sees uh Goliath awaken as soon as night falls and he just like explodes the rock off his muscles and he's flexing. Okay. He explodes so hard that she like flies backwards by it. With Dude. just stone chips like all over her. I could make an edit and make it like, more. Like I laughed out loud. Wait, an edit of what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> like he, he, know. he he grunts and flexes and stuff explodes out of him. Oh my god! And no. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, but she asks if he's like okay. It, like she asks, she checks if he's like still tranquilized. He's like no, because sleep rejuvenates us. Winks at camera. Plot point. Yeah. When yeah. I <laughs> and then Next he's all position. like, "You stay with me through the entire day." And she's all like, yeah, well, someone had to make sure those comic book rejects didn't find you. So she also reads Image Comics, she just does. like I did. Yeah. Um, and then he thanks her, and they share a firm handshake See, I don't, I, I don't even know if it's like a handshake, because they just kind of like reach out and touch each it other's It seemed like they were just second. holding each other's hands. And then they like realize it's awkward, and they like make it a handshake. They're like, okay, no, this is business time, not like romance. We're not ready for that yet. What a, whatever, and he's like, thank you, it's very <laughs> possible that you saved my life. And when they do their awkward handshake, she's like, so now we're even. And Goliath says mm-hmm. he has to go check in with his kids, and Elise is already trying yeah. to get his second date in. She's like, so uh, later tonight? She is! She's, like, ready for it. And, like, she stayed with him throughout the whole day, but she's like, she's ready for more. God, I think she, they like each she, other. She's so ride or die. I love her. Um, and yeah, right from the beginning. And he just kind of smiles and nods. And so the so meanwhile, back at the castle, the boyos uh-huh. are off stretching their muscles and waking up. And oh my about... god, there's like there's a really good flexing scene of all of them because usually like like Goliath hogs the flexing yeah. when they when night happens, but this time we got to see all the other ones flexing too. Yeah. And Anatos just... is probably filming this and like jacking. Off no, but it. he is though. <laughs> it's revealed in a few minutes. We, we're gonna talk. Okay, it's about revealed that. he's filming it, not that he's jacking off to them. Although he definitely was. <laughs> no. But, okay. Okay. Whatever. Whatever. Um, Goliath gets back, and as soon as he does, there is a video from Xanatos's office of just having it super zoomed in on Goliath and it's got like his face and his pecs at an angle and stuff and it's got oh my God. it's just you know there's inclination there and Owen's in the room with him watching it there's inclination okay, well they've there backed too. off the floor or Owen has assisted Xanatos in his masturbation I feel like <laughs> like he's he's there for his boss dude he's 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 also ride or die yeah like he is to Xanatos what Elisa is to Goliath and really? Xanatos turns off the video for some reason. It's just like, we're ready for him now, Owen. Yeah, Owen who has no lines in this episode. No, but like, he, we he, see he, Owen, but he doesn't say anything. He's just got his whole blonde, richy, rich boy presence. <laughs> but So everyone's like all happy to see Goliath. And then at some point, like Goliath calls Hudson by no, his no, new he name. Says, he says, given what happened, I wish you had co- accompanied us last night, Hudson. And the others are just like, Hudson? And Hudson says, aye, it's my name. And what would you make of it? 
he has in like a really like challenging yeah, yeah. tone to no, all of them. He's just like all happy. He's just like, I it's my name. And he leans in. He is happy, but also I feel like the implication is like if they talk shit about it, like they're gonna get their asses beat by I don't, it, I don't like, know. right here. And he leans in <laughs> Like it would be a cheerful ass beating, but like it would he's, be an ass. He looks so proud though. I love it, because he looks so proud. That's his name. He's like, it's my name. Uh-huh. And he's like, Yeah, but they all they are that scared. They're like, oh, it's a fine name. Hudson, I like it. It's like they it feels like if they don't say they liked it, like they'll be in trouble. <laughs> I don't know. I just thought the exchange was cute. He just wanted... It is cute. Their fear is cute to me. I, I didn't really read it as fear, it's just like, he's just like, what would you think of my name? And he leans in all, like, smirky and suggestively. And uh-huh, like, yeah, he's like, what are you gonna do, kiss me? Um, uh, but they all decide that, hey, if Hudson has a name, that they all get to pick names too, because suddenly they're just all about they, names. They just, they want to take after their dad so badly! They do, even though, like, episode one, they're like, oh, we don't fucking need names, that's a fucking human thing. But now they're just like, names! We fucking love names. And uh, and they're all like, we should choose names too. Names that suit our new life here, Brooklyn says. And Goliath in dad mode just kind of like smiles and goes, oh? And what oh may my, they yeah, be? It's like, it's so, he has like this smile on his face. He Like he thinks this is adorable and like yeah. it's full dad mode. So Brooklyn is like, Brooklyn, I'm Brooklyn. And then Broadway says, Broadway. And Lexington is all, Lexington. Do you like it? Like he needs validation, this poor gay boy. Um, oh, but so but then they're like, the dog needs one too, though. So Brooklyn gives Bronx his name. He says Bronx. Um, and did you notice this that Bronx really obviously fucking hates his name? I don't know. He, he look Bron- like he turns away with like a growl, but then Lexington is like, I think he likes it. Like, <laughs> but no, he doesn't though. <laughs> He definitely didn't like it. Look, he's a dog. I don't know. He just he doesn't have the vocal um gift that the others do that he can't just say no, I want a different name. He's a dog. Oh, yeah, cuz th- this is his name from now on. They they the rest of them just decided that Bronx is his name. Yes. Um but so, anyway, so now they all have names. Now we can call them by their names like we have already been all we, along. Yeah, nothing's changed really. All that Nothing's is changed sh- for us. Yeah. <laughs> And Goliath and Hudson exchange this look, and they're both just, like, these proud dad parents, and Goliath says oh they're God. all fine names. Yes, they're they're proud of their sons. Yes. It's so cute. Um, so after this, Goliath is called down to meet with, like, the big boss. So Xantos is in his office, hand in his pocket, because he's, like, still jerking off as he's talking to Goliath. <laughs> and he's like, Goliath, there's someone I want you to meet. An old acquaintance, I believe. Oh, so uh, <laughs> the door opens, and we get like this kind of like shadowy g- gargoyleish figure, and Goliath is just like, yeah. "Who? Who could this be?" <laughs> and you know that reminds me. Um, I do have to acknowledge this. A few days ago, I posted on our t- on the Loin Cloth Hour <laughs> Twitter that that weird shadow figure of Demona from last episode, and I'm just like, who is she? Uh-huh. Just kind of like as a joke, because it's obviously Demona. <laughs> and then people were like saying, oh, it's Demona! And I'm just it's like... It's like they cracked the code. <laughs> okay, I think they were saying that ironically, though. Like, as a, you know, they were making a fun I, of themselves. I, I don't know. I, I can't tell for sure. <laughs> um, what I should have done... I think done... that sarcasm is just omnipresent on the internet. What I should have done is... Uh, is I should have posted that, and I should have said, "Who's that Pokemon?" Who's that Pokemon? <laughs> it's Demona. No, but like, um, and then Goliath walks out of the shadows, and Goliath gives a Demona super. Demona walks out of the shadows. Oh shit! Yeah. Okay. Listen. I know what you meant. <laughs> and Goliath gives this very, you know, like, you know, like, <gasps> like a gas. Yeah, like he, like inhale, like his chest fully expands. Pax with the giant inhalation. Are, he just Pax touched. are bulbous right now. He is They're that like shocked. out of control. His nipples are so pointy. If he's got nipples, I don't think he does, but if he had them, they would be pointy. I mean, we've said before that his his chest like reacts to his emotions in these first batch of episodes and like they're reacting to his surprise now. They're just ballooning once again with with his shock that he's seeing the love of his life back from the dead. He is completely amazed. Um, um, and see, now you just gave me the idea. I feel like we could take like screenshots of like Goliath's pecs, and we can discern from these screenshots what emotion he's feeling at the time. 
I am completely positive that we could do we that. We should do that as a game, like, next episode. <laughs> I'll just collect a bunch of screenshots and we'll try and make guesses. Just text. Okay, yeah, I, I hope I can win. Maybe. So, um, <laughs> Demona walks out of the shadows, and she's doing that real, you know, that, like, that kind of, like, uh, super lovey-dovey yonder sort of stance. And she's like, mm-hmm. Goliath, my love, or something. Oh, my God. There's so much, like, romantic dialogue between the two of them. This and then episode. it zooms in on, like, a super closing, close-up imposing shot of her face, and it's uh-huh. like, really sinister looking. Yeah, like the, like, the music changes to, like, be more, like, foreboding, and her eyes narrow a little bit, yeah, and it's just, like, yeah, yeah. it's it's really good. Like, it's really, like, oh, I wonder if she's evil, but, like, I don't care that they're giving away that she's evil already. It's just, like, a really good shot to me. I don't think, like... It's, it's, one, that I, it's one that I always remembered from, like, when I was a kid. I always remembered that moment. Like, Demona's evil, but, like, she's not, like, you know, she, she, she's got some redeeming qualities. Oh yeah, like she's a fucking boss in this whole episode. I love loved her this episode. This episode reminded me why I love Demona so much. Like she's so good. But you know, yeah, so this is fine. Everything's fine. Uh nothing is wrong. The two of them are hugging. Like their wings wrap around each other, mm-hmm. which I always love to watch that happen. And then um, and is like making this face as he's watching <laughs> the two of them. Like he's not <laughs> sure if he can keep Jackie off to it or not. But then he decides that, like, yeah, I probably can't keep chatting off. He's got, like... like that's he, how I interpret it as My case. favorite part of his face here is he's got his, like, finger, like, between his upper lip and his nose. Like, he's <laughs> pretending like he has a mustache for some reason. Oh, my God. I don't know why he's doing that. Maybe he thinks that if he looks like he has a mustache, <laughs> Goliath will forget about Demona and go back to him. Probably. I don't wait. Would, would that work? Is Goliath into mustaches? There was the captain of the guard. He had a mustache. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Xanatos is just but, winning it. He's trying to find but, ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's trying to keep trying things to see what sticks. Like, I understand. Um, but Demona's like being super lovey dovey with him. She's saying, like, oh, Goliath, all the days I've dreamed of you in this moment. Uh, Goliath's just like confused because he's like, you were shattered by the Vikings. So then she and Xanatos sort of like double team him. Yeah. On this, like, this Bullshit. pretty plausible, actually, but still a very fake story it's of like how story. she's alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they do a pretty good job of, you know, spinning I, this web I of lies. I forget lies. what they said. It was just like uh, Demona um, got lost and. Yeah, well, trying to she, find so, them. yeah, so she says that she feared for Goliath's safety the night of the, the Viking attack or whatever. The night that, that he and Hudson went to pursue the Vikings. So she went after them, but then she lost her way. And the sun rose up before she did the bet to the castle. Which, like, right away, that's a big red flag to yeah. me. I can't imagine Demona ever, like, no. losing her way. No. She's too powerful to ever do that. No, she's um, she's resourceful. <laughs> then he buys it, and he's like, well, how are you still alive, though? Because that was, like, a thousand years ago, if you remember. Um, and then she tells him that when she did get back to the castle, the mages had already turned everyone else to stone, like, permanently. So she asked him to also turn her to stone. And then Xanatos jumps in and he says that, like, yeah, I purchased Demona like a year ago as a statue for my private collection. But then after I broke the curse on all of you, I thought, hey, maybe it worked on this other random gargoyle oh that God. I have. See, it's like and right it there, right when Xanatos chimes in and gives his part, you 100% know that that story's a fucking lie, because that's so, like, Yeah, but, like, you can't, like, you don't know how it's a lie, but you know that it's a lie somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, that, that whole story is just, like, trying to him, get him aligned with Xanatos, because Demona's all like, we owe it to this man for uniting us. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, Goliath also has this really, really sad line when he says, uh, to Demona, he says, with you alive. I can start to live again as well. Oh, which I just thought it was like so sad. My my, my, like, my emo Barra boy, please. I know. Oh. Like he's been he's been dead inside this whole time because she's been gone and like everyone's gone. He's just he's just been keeping it together like for the sake of the other gargoyles. See, but this, like he is still 
that depressed goth child that I just want to give is, a big this is heart why to. I, this is kind of how I felt in like the second episode when he asked to get turned into stone. I'm just like, no, my, my borrowed child. Like he's so good. Um. So, uh, but anyways, of course, the entire like rest of the pack is like happy to see mommy gargoyle alive and well. They're so happy, and they, they start immediately like asking all the same questions that the Goliath just and did. Bronx is but like, is like oh. licking her and stuff. <laughs> of course, and Demon is like, "I'll tell you later." Right now, it's just so good to see all of you again. Like she's <laughs> happy to see them. They're happy to see her, and like. This isn't completely faked on her no, part. It's like not. she definitely is happy to see like, all of she, them. She, she, she cares alive, about them. You know, she does. Yeah, like she loves them. But then she begins working her angle as like a double agent that Xanthus has planted with them. Because she is all like, "My love, I must ask a favor of you." And Goliath is like, "Anything." Like he's so oh, into this right now. Like God. he just wants to be put under her heel again. Stepped on with her, with her stilettos, yeah, like he just wants that, to be dumbed the fuck out of he, right now. He's so submissive. He's like, I'll do fucking anything for you, so my it's, angel of the night. So they immediately start talking about like the disc stuff again, and they have to get it back for Xanatos or something. Right, and these they, three discs that are in those three different armed bases or whatever yeah the fuck. I, I don't even know like it's hard to keep track <laughs> of I, exposition with me is just like like in one ear and out the other well yeah because i remember last episode you like did not even pay attention to that no. but it's it's just the same stuff but this time demona is all like so we should help xanatos because he's been like so nice to us and <laughs> i think we should do that and like i'm curling my hair as i'm making eye contact with you Goliath, and let's just you know, let's invade these three heavily armed fortresses. Wouldn't that be, <laughs> wouldn't that be sexy? Diddle diddle, and he's like she's trying to like out himbo him right now, which yeah. totally works. But yeah. he's just like, oh god, like fuck yes. Like this is emotional manipulation at its finest. It is, and I love it. I mean, it's bad. Don't do, don't do this to your significant other. This is evil. I mean, I hate I hate that it's happening to Goliath, but it's like the villains are so entertaining. They're so good. Yeah. So okay, so they decide to all split up. Um, Goliath and Demona are going to go together and take on the airship. Uh, Brooklyn, Broadway, and Lex are going to take the tower, and then Hudson and Bronze are going to take the underground base. Um, there was another exchanger that I thought was funny because yeah. when he gives the mission to the trio, they say "cool," and he's just like, "What?" And they say it's a new word we were learned last night. And Lutz says it indicates a positive response, which is like the nerdiest way you can put that. And Goliath, and is Goliath? Just kinda, he's just kind of like, oh yeah. Which is really <laughs> like funny. it made me laugh out loud because he doesn't even respond to it. He just sort of goes like, uh, and he like moves <laughs> on to Hudson. <laughs> oh, just this top tier dadliness right there. It was really good. Um, and Hudson, like, doesn't want to... He wants to go alone, but Goliath is like, take Bront with you, because he needs the exercise. And Hudson agrees to that. Yeah. Um, so then as everyone is leaving the office on their assorted missions, there's a, there is a close-up of Xanatos at his desk, just, like, narrowing his eyes evilly, which he does. So, like, there's yeah. at least two evil people around right now. Yeah, I don't just know. Just narrowing their eyes there's, under there's extreme like, close There's, like, a few good screenshots of Demona. There's a few good screenshots of Xanatos' episode. It's just, like, being evil and schemy and shit. Mm-hmm. It's good shit. So, um, um... And they're about to, I guess, like, embark on this, like, mission or whatever. And before they do, like, Demona and Goliath kind of have, like, their little exchange, and Demona's all like, oh, it's time for our dreams to come true and unite again. Oh, okay, I love that it's changed. Okay, so first, he says to her, soaring with you again, it's like a dream. And she tells him, we've dreamed for a thousand years, Goliath. It's time for our dreams to come true. Which is, like, so beautiful. Like, I love these two. Um, like, I still ship them, even though I also ship Goliath with, like, 18 other people. But, like, he and Demona will always be a bit ship to me, just because they're, they're so tragic together. I suppose. Ugh, it's so good. So, they take off, they're flying around each other, and from the building, or the castle, Xanatos is just kind of, like, watching them at the window, and I can't tell if he's looking at- I can't tell if he's looking at them or he's looking at his own reflection. 
Ooh. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Why not? Oh. I have the screenshot. Oh, I lost. There's it. also like a full moon out right now, yeah, which yeah, yeah. if if you watch this show, you the moon is never not full in yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a permanently full moon. Okay, so uh, they get to this airship, and they, you know, like there's a lot of wind turbines or whatever that are, and okay, th- okay but the whole aesthetic of the airship and like the music playing when they get up to it. It reminds me of like the aesthetic of like the final level of Sly Two when they're on the airship. I'll take your word for it. It's 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 it's, it's a good game. It reminds me when I when I hear airship, I think Final Fantasy. So I think of like the airship from FF6. That's that's valid. That's my personal. I see. <laughs> but can I just say something here when they're struggling against the wind? Yeah, and then like. Flapping their wings really hard against the wind yeah. to get to the airship, and how just last episode Delilah said that they can't do that. Okay, they can only fly on currents of air. We got into like there was like a huge like debate about like whether that's true or not between like us and like a few others. And I was thinking specifically of this scene. I'm just like, no, <laughs> they can fly. Uh, so I, I'm just I'm calling bullshit on Delilah. He can fly. He just didn't feel like flying last episode when Elisa wanted him to. It, I think he just made up that fucking lie and was like, no, we can't. I don't want to right now. So due to an error that's still unknown to me, I lost a little, just like a few seconds of our recording here. But basically what happens is um, Goliath and Demona pretty much just enter the airship. And um, Demona's immediately just like... While these humans make the choice to waste their lives, their worthless lives, guarding this airship, then that's their choice, you know, in terms of whether they gotta kill people or not, and this sets Goliath off. And then I go into comparing Demona to the meme where it says, Oh, you say you would die for me? Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> then do it. Perish for then your perish. queen. <laughs> that's, that, yeah, that's, I can see Demona. That, that's Demona. That. I, I would simp for Demona. Um. Anyways, so I mean, who wouldn't? That's valid. So, but they're stopped by two guards who have mm-hmm. guns. And okay, this is the part where you get really mad at me. One of these guards is Vinny. What? Like, who was? No! The... <laughs> yes, no! No! it is. You're kidding. Um, okay, so remember last episode, the guy oh who God. was on the motorcycle, and then Lexington like went up to him. And the guy freaked out, and like his motorcycle exploded. Um, that same guy is one of these two guards, and we don't we don't realize it this episode, but like an episode way down the line, there's gonna be a Vinny centric episode where he like he wait, flashed back all his wait, previous appearances, wait, and this is one of them. Wait, wait, what is what, Vinny what? the Pie Guy? Yes. Oh my God. This is that guy. <laughs> oh my god. For context, there is an episode of Gargoyles I really like that'll come later down the line, and at the end of the episode, a pie is thrown in Hudson's face. This is that man who throws the pie. Oh my god. Yeah, so Vinny is secretly like the center of the Gargoyles universe, because oh he's just like in the background god. all the time. He's the pie guy. I need I need to sink that in. I need to sink in to that for a minute. Oh, you just keep going. You keep going. <laughs> okay, so well, there's a short fight scene where Vinny just gets the shit beat out of him, as well as this other guy. Um, they get knocked unconscious by Goliath and Demona, being like, they're totally badass. They work as a team. They use like mist just like the guys like shoot a bullet at one point and like it hits a pipe and like all this okay fog there's this comes really out cool... and they, they hide themselves in it there's this really cool uh demona's line that you're forgetting is like when, oh, what's she, that? when they're like aiming at them and she's like she's like oh you wouldn't fire your guns in here you could damage the airship yeah like she tries to intimidate him but it doesn't work because he shoots his gun at her anyway um so okay so after they are both knocked out. She picks one of them up. I think she picks Vinny up. Um, and she goes over and like hel- holds him over the the hole that like they came in on. Yeah. Where, like underneath this hole is just like open air and the city beneath. And she's not just fucking drop them out. Yeah, of the yeah, airship. that's that's kind of crazy, I have to say. Like Yeah, and Delilah's like, whoa, uh, what are you doing? 
And she says, what does it look like? I'm making sure they don't cause us more trouble later. And he says, no, to kill in the heat of battle is one thing, but not like this. I kind of got to agree with Goliath here, because that's just unnecessary. Well, I mean, I do agree with him, but also, <laughs> next episode, they're going to blow up this entire airship yeah, anyway, I, I where saw, a lot of I, other people probably will die. I saw that in the TV. Uh, not to spoil the next episode, but <laughs> Anyways, anyway, but she, she does just like, she sort of like, is like okay and sort of like contemptuously she, like throws the die into a she, wall she's like the centuries have made you weak goliath which is like yeah. he's been asleep for centuries i don't i think right so I that's also like the first yeah. indication that she hasn't been asleep this whole time yeah that she's been just going around doing things yeah and uh she throws the guy off to the side and there's like a loud crash noise and i remember writing in my notes yeah like for all we I know remember, that might have killed him yeah i remember <laughs> writing my notes well he wasn't dead yet that that probably killed him <laughs> so then there's the, uh, right after that, there's another awesome claw transition i'm gonna point out every time they do it um yes. and we see our our faves the trio as they land on this island tower mm -hmm. for their mission i don't know what island this is like it feels like ellis island but i think it's just some other I have island no idea. That's in new york harbor i guess but lexington is all like he's having a great time because i guess they use some sort of technology to like find out where they're going i guess but he's just like the magic in this century is so so and brooklyn's like cool <laughs> says, exactly. Like they're they're on they're in sync right now they're on the same wavelength of this new hip teenage language. They're looking for a way in. Broadway like sees this hatch and is it's all like, like, oh, no problem. And he rips it open. It's like the first like thing he's done other than eat in the first four episodes. Yeah, like it's nice to see this. Like like it reminds us that they're not just like one note joke characters, that they're also like, you know, they're warriors, just yeah. like Goliath and Hudson and Demona are. Um and they're like they're looking around this this place that they're in there's like no other there's no one else here yet um but brooklyn finds this elevator doorway like he forces it open um they know that where they have to go like where the disc is is four floors below them so they're like okay let's climb down this elevator shaft uh brooklyn is like counting down the floors as they go they get to the floor so brooklyn like hops off the rope and he's gonna force these doors open to the floor um, Lexington like slides to a stop on the rope, and then above him, Broadway is sliding down too. And I only noticed this on this viewing, but like Broadway's ass like fully lands right on Lexington's <laughs> head, like oh my like God. just a good nice little like Look. solid bump and push, and like Lexington's head is like pushed aside like by Broadway's butt. It, I it's, it, that's something I've never noticed either. Yeah, no. When you pointed that out to me, and I saw like Broadway's just big ass, just overpower Lexington's, you know, <laughs> just his small, his small form. Yes, he uh -huh. was. They were sliding down the rope. Um, Broadway's big, mostly naked ass, because the loin cloth like isn't covering a no, lot of that. No, it's seat, not. You that's, know? I think that's why a lot of people like Broadway is because um. He, he, he just doesn't have the loincloth circumference to cover up all of, you know, just that beefy <laughs> the, all, all of that. Yeah. Like, it's really fast, but I definitely noticed it this time. Just, I'm probably just I'm taking Yeah, no, like, I, 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 like, audibly freaked out when you sent me that. I'm just like, wait, what? Okay, so they, uh, Brooklyn opens the doors while, uh, Lexington's getting a face full of Broadway ass, and as soon as they open the doors, um, they see just a squadron of guys pointing guns at them, and it just, we get this shot of just, like, Brooklyn and Lexington and Broadway in the elevator shaft, and they're just like, I guess we're gonna be late for supper to be continued. Yeah, it's a really funny looking shot actually it's too bad it's the last one we'll ever see of them because they are about to die no yeah no we never so, see that those, is unfortunate we never see those characters again and, and i, I do, guess all these guards were just waiting for them like did they know the gargoyles were coming probably i guess that's a spoiler for next episode that's well, obviously they did because as soon as they open the door <laughs> they're all pointing guns at them <laughs> listen Where's, Listen, the, where's, you. where's the trash dog when we need him? He is uh, he back come, to being homeless. Does he come back next episode? I don't think that this character does come back. Although maybe he does. 
we have, I'll, I'll look them up in the in the Grimorum wiki. So like that final shot where they're just like in the elevator shaft, I have to point out the fact that they forgot to animate like Broadway's legs completely, and they. <laughs> <laughs> they look like giant blue <laughs> eggs just at the bottom. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. He looks like... He... Well, like, he's pretty small because <laughs> he's, like, in the background, so... <laughs> yeah, I know, but, like, his... <laughs> oh. So that's the episode. So after that, we just see a beat to be continued. His legs? <laughs> okay. It's sad that he lost his legs right before being shot the hell out of. <laughs> okay, okay. So, that was Awakening Part 4. Um, oh my god, we got through it. Now, honestly, this what is would like you... the quickest we've been through an episode, I think. Yeah, I mean, I feel like like a lot of things happened in this episode, but also like not a lot did happen. It's sort no. of like that weird middle ground. Like A lot of character work happened, Demona came back. Um, they're mostly still just setting us up for like the big finale next episode, though, so... Yeah, it looks um, like there's going to be a lot of action sequences and drama, and I'm not sure how I'm going to yes. take notes on it all. Uh, we'll just have to write lots of gunfire. Um, the, there might be robots involved. Who knows what's going to happen? What would you rate this episode? Okay, let's see. Um, we started out in the park, and we ended it embarking on a mission. Um. Mm. It was pretty, um, pretty, you know, just between the lines. I would give it like maybe like three and a half to four loincloths, like four, four loincloths. Yeah, yeah. I probably what what have I been giving all the other episodes? Like fives, like okay, or four, like, four point five. You gave the first two fives, and the last one was like a four point five for you. Yeah, I'd probably do another 4.5 for this one. And, like, the only reason it's not a full 5 is just because there wasn't quite enough day content for me. There was very minimal... We're we're focusing on Goliath and Elisa and Goliath and Demona. There's an emerging love triangle between him and the strong, powerful woman who he can't choose which of them he wants to step on him more. Exactly. So I can can understand, like, the difficulty here, because they are both super hot. No, they are. Um... We, we did say we were going to do, like, a whole debate on who's the better waifu at some point. Oh, yeah. When I feel like we should do that next episode, because yeah. that's also the one where, like, Goliath makes his choice. God, yeah, no, it went, uh, in the to be continued, where it showed, like, both of them, like, falling off, and he has to, like, choose and stuff, it reminded me so much of, like, the Spider-Man movie. Um, oh, my God. God, literally, all I'm doing this whole episode is just listing, like, references from my own personal, like... Okay, well, voice. at least it's not Drake and Josh. Yeah, But you mean fair. the part where, like, Gwen Stacy is falling and yeah. Spider-Man has to save her? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, not that, mm-hmm. not necessarily that, but, like, you know, in, like, the first Tobey Maguire movie, we're like, uh... Oh. <laughs> Listen, I like Tobey Maguire. I know you do. You're a Tobey Maguire stan. I feel like he saves a lot of falling people. Spider-Man. Um, he does. Um, <laughs> but, like, there's that scene where, like, the Green Goblins make him choose between, like, you know, Mary Jane or just, like, the kids in, like, the bus car. And he tries, uh-huh. he, he saves them both. He's so good. What a good superhero. It, it really, I like... If he were anything like the comics, though, like, Mary Jane wouldn't have made it. Oh, damn. Yeah. I feel like if Spider-Man was in the same universe as the Gargoyles, like they would all be friends. They'd hang out together. Oh, absolutely. Like he would he would bring subs over and Broadway would eat all of them. And then there'd yeah. be one of, one of the subs being Goliath. He's oh my a, god. <laughs> he's a sub. A big sub. Yes. A big big old that, that's more than a foot lawn. I feel like Hudson's kind of a sub too. I feel like they are all subs, except for Lexington. And, like, he just gets exhausted yeah. every fucking day having to, like, dominate his entire clan. Like, it's, yeah. it gets to be a lot like, sometimes. He, he's, he's, like, the clan uh, top. Yeah. <laughs> 4.5 for you, 4 for me. Um, nice. And I would say, uh, what would you say is the animator's horniest moment? Okay. Here? We both know. I am no. Well, there's there's three options for me. Really? There is either right in the beginning where Goliath was squirming underneath all those people. You were kind of fixated on that. I do like that part a lot. 
there is the moment where Lexington like crashes into the building by accident and you almost get like an oh! Oscar shot in the Okay, okay. Or there's the part where his face gets crushed by like Broadway's falling ass. I um <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of leaning towards the last one, honestly. I am I am too, honestly, just because like one Goliath already won last episode and like him being knocked unconscious and him squirming underneath guys, it feels like it's sort of the same thing. It's the same again, scene. you know, it's yeah. a little samey. Yeah. Like, Goliath still needs to, like, up his game. Uh, while Broadway is bringing it home every fucking time with his yeah. butt-related he, antics. He got the first two episodes, and it looks like he's a strong contender for this episode it is, as well. It is unbelievable. I, I guess we are just horny for Broadway. I don't we know are. what's happening. I don't know. He is really hot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I have to pick that one, personally. I... I'm going to agree with you. I really like the um the subtle nuance of that scene. I like how uh -huh. the fact it's short but sweet. It, it's just like one of those background moments, but you know, it's 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 very was it needed? Was it supposed to be that horny background moment? <laughs> so yeah, was it needed? No. Did it add to the show? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. it did. I would say it did. Um. <laughs> And last but not least, we have our slot for the gayest character. Oh, I haven't even... I literally have not thought of this. Really? Um, I'm serious, yeah. Uh, who is the gayest character here? Uh, like, Vanatos was pretty gay when he was jacking off no, to Goliath's text. I but really... Like, that was also only in our imagination, so it didn't actually happen. No, but, like, the whole... Ca <laughs> the thing with the camera, though, the camera being so zoomed in on you Goliath... Know, there is a camera involved, yeah. And, like, Owen watching him... Like, Owen being there only makes it more gay. Yeah. I don't <laughs> know. I would say, like, Xanatos, but, like, I don't know if we've analyzed everyone yet. Xanatos is a contender. Well, let's, well, let's see who else is there. I feel like the trio had a lot of like really cute moments together this episode mm -hmm. uh, of just them like hanging out and being cute and like friends and stuff. I don't know. If, was it gay though? Uh, hmm. I I mean I feel like it is. I want to say it is, but like at the I same mean time, it is. <laughs> it ha they have their own antics like every episode. But was it homoerotic? <laughs> No. Like, I always like their antics. Like, I don't feel like their antics this episode was, like, any gayer I feel than like they fucked up the kitchen I, that other episode. You know, you know who I think is a strong um, symbol for, like, positive, you know, just, like, you know, um, being out and proud uh, was Hudson when Alisa? he was talking... When, when he was talking... <laughs> Why are you laughing? I'm not done yet. I don't know, because I said Elisa first. I don't know why I said her. <laughs> oh, okay, so... No, I, I like Hudson being out and proud about his new name. That seems like a very... Yes. That seems like a very, you know, um, positive representation of sort of LGBT terms in, in itself. Just like, you know... He's such a good role model. Yeah, and is. like demonstrating that like you get to pick your own name... Um, yeah, and like you get to decide like how you present yourself to the world and everything. Yeah, exactly. I liked that scene. I also like that was the way really nice. You and Goliath also had that that quiet moment where they just like smiled at each other yeah. over their gay sons, all picking their names too. I also like uh, Hudson kind of like leaning in and being like, "What do you think of oh my, my name?" Hmm? Like, uh huh. That, that... Yeah, want to make something of it? I don't know. I that that scene I just found it very cute. He's there's I, I like Hudson a lot I mean if he leaned in on me like I would also be too turned on to like think of a response I would have to fight myself to stop myself from like <laughs> kissing him right there because he's just so damn he's he's very cute he's so attractive he oh is. my god um so I don't know so, um yeah I mean I so I guess it's between Xanatos and Hudson hmm I mean, I'm Zan good with Hudson on this one. Xanatos is kind of a perv, but Hudson is kind of, you know, he's very out and proud about himself. I got to give it to Hudson. Yeah, as like well. he's he's doing the work, you know, to help his community. Yes, yeah. Like like this is how um I express myself and you can express yourself however you wish. Yeah. I'm down with that. 
So I like Hudson. I think I'm gonna pick Hudson. Yes, yeah. Gayest I'm, character. I love it. I love it. I also headcanon that Hudson is definitely not straight. That's just me. I don't headcanon anyone that's straight, really. <laughs> like, what is straight? I don't but know. Like, but like, people. especially not like Lexington or Hudson. They're they're the least straightest in my opinion. You're probably right. Yeah. We got oh. an email. We got an email. We got an email? Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Yes. I've been waiting for this. It's from none other than our friend Lucian. 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 Lucian, tell us how your name is pronounced later on, because we, we were having I, a little debacle about that earlier. We bit. were discussing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Lucian says... Hey yo, Manicorn said. This is Lucian. I was wondering if we could hear Lucian. in the moments that you think the gargoyles slash other characters have the most smooshable expressions. You've ar- you've both already posted a few moments on the podcast Twitter, but I think it'd be fun to see more screenshots of those moments and hear your opinions on the expressions in them from time to time. It's a lot of fun listening to this. Excited to listen again next week. All right. Oh, that's such a sweet letter. Yeah, so yeah. he's asking what their most their most smoochable moments, like their most kissable expressions. Like that's all the time, though. I want to kiss them always. I literally was just talking. But we were about... literally just talking about Hudson. You wanting to kiss him in that moment? No, that we that, that, that was so. kind of me addressing it right there. Um, but no, Hudson definitely when he's like leaning in like that, asking what what you think of his name. Just I like. That it's a like lot. he wants you to kiss him. Or like I punch in the face. I I just wanna one of, one. I wanna lounge with him in his little like quarters and watch TV and just kind of like uh you know just sit in his lap and stroke his beard. Do you think Hudson is into fisting? I I uh, I'll take that as a yes. I so good to know. <laughs> Fisting. Hudson strikes me as being into like every kink possible, as long as they're like gross kinks. Like I think he's into like water sports. Um, what what other one? Like I think he's like a rubber daddy. Like all those kinks that like are usually frowned on by like polite society. I feel like he is at least somewhat into them because he's just that kind of guy. I is that your read? Like, where? What? What a part of what part about Hudson, um, as a character gives you that kind of like expression? Uh, every part of him, like every interaction he has with anybody. Listen, I can spot these types from a mile away. I see Hudson as a very well. They give him very boomer characteristics. Um, he's very um. He he tries to maintain his pride, but also wants to um sort of lounge in that uh post warrior retirement because you know he's definitely he's seen some he years. Uh, so okay, so he he's not aware of a lot of these changes yet. No, he's but you not. know who is? You know who learns how to use computers? Lexington. Lexington. So Lexington, as the other most queer member of the clan, is going to introduce. Hudson to a lot of new concepts and we're going to learn that Hudson you know an old dog can learn new tricks after all maybe yeah no absolutely (laughs) there's a lot about Hudson that I just you know I I I just I think is very interesting um like there's this one particular um there's this one particular like screenshot I have here that has uh really garnered my attention in terms of like Hudson's just uh he, oh my god this is yeah no he's 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 very happy with himself in that picture very content and he's so very... the viewers can't see this but Sid has just shared with me on discord a view of Hudson in a Santa costume or at least the upper part of a Santa costume um and I'll just leave the rest to your imagination. It's, um, I would like to thank, uh, Nico for this, uh, lovely fan art of Hudson. Um, and he's just, you know, and just really envisioning that old scallywags, um, you know, just his, uh, his beauty. I'm, you know, a little aroused right now. It's got me feeling good. Uh, I'm shocked. And, 
No, but, um, like, Hudson, characteristically, he would probably be into quite a few kinks, I imagine. Like, he would like to... Definitely. Try like, I feel like Goliath is the vanilla one, and then Hudson is like, oh, I'll try anything once. He's an experimentalist. You know? He's, he, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, he's not young anymore, so he just definitely wants to get his, you know, rough and rowdy exactly. ways And also, there. like, he is very in demand, because he gives off, like, such strong daddy vibes, like, everyone. Yes, like I feel like everyone wants to play with Hudson, like at least a little bit. Um, he's he, I have to say it. Um, personally for me, he's the one I'm most attracted to out of like the main group. Um, which is funny because he's all, he also wears the most clothes out of everybody too. I know. He, yeah, he does. It's because he's a tease. He is. That's a why. Tease. I don't know. I, I I feel like in terms of like animation wise, I don't think like the animators wanted to really focus on just how expressive that old man's body can be you know just, but they do though they, they do, do all the time they do um, they just find other ways yeah so um <laughs> i'd say that about wraps things up we i think so yeah another strong episode not necessarily a horny episode but a yeah. lot of things happened in it but we find our own horniness don't we we do we we, we always find a way <laughs> Life finds a way. Uh, my name is Sydney, aka Sid. You can find me on Twitter at Sid Scripts. You can find me on Fur Affinity at Alistair Alderman. I just kind of had a little burpee there. Um, that was hot. Thank you. I'm a pretty hot guy. Yeah. Imagine if Hudson burped like in your mouth. I'm done. <laughs> I, I said where you can find me. I'm done. And I am Croup, a.k.a. Soup Goblin, a.k.a. Manicorn. You can find me at Croup on Fur Affinity, um, under Manicorn on Patreon, under the Manly Unicorn on Twitter, and under Soup Goblin Stash on Blogspot if you want to find all of my really old posts. Uh, I was just recently on the Dude Spanking Dudes podcast, where I spoke about the spanking community and the furry community, and where they may overlap. And you should listen to that if you are interested in that sort of thing. Um, but that said, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you all so much for listening. Yeah. And please check back in in two more weeks, where we conclude the five-part Gargoyles Awakening. You realize in about, like... Five-parter. You realize in just, like, a matter of a few weeks, we're going to be introduced to the pack. I am fully aware of this. And I know that I'm, you're counting down I'm, like the days. I'm literally like I, I'm I'm growing so like that, that'll more... be twenty-eight days we're gonna be talking about them. Can you hold on that long? Look, I have been thirsting over <laughs> Wolf f since I was like fifteen years old. I'm not prepared to stop now. Just to Yeah, I I th I don't think you're able to. It's like wired into your brain. I'm going to be so sweaty that whole episode. Like, I mean, there's Wolf, and I get to talk about Dingo. Like, so I'm I, looking forward to that too. Like, just talking about Hudson for the past few minutes, I like there's pit stains right now. Seriously. What if Hudson and Wolf, like, wrestled <sighs> with each other? <sighs> <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't. <laughs> I mean, you know, just wrestled, like in singlets oh okay i i thank you for the world <laughs>